You're listening to Points Talk with the Travel Mom Squad, previously known as the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Follow the links in the show notes to stay up to date with what the Travel Mom Squad has been up to. We love our credit card points for the points and miles we earn on them for our nearly free vacations, but we also enjoy the perks and benefits that come with them. Today, we're talking about when credit card perks literally saved the day for us. Welcome to the Travel Hacking Mom Show. We are three moms who've discovered how to leverage credit card welcome offers to get hundreds of thousands of dollars in travel expenses for nearly free. We've used credit card points and miles to take vacations to places like Hawaii, Paris, Greece, the Maldives, Italy, and so much more. And the best part? We each still have an 800 plus credit score. Imagine being able to book a vacation without having to check your bank account. It's totally possible and we're here to show you how. Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Pam, Alex's mom. And I'm Jess. We are Travel Hacking Moms. So today we are talking all about the credit card perks that you may not even know come with your cards. We love to use these perks that make travel less stressful and paying an annual fee easier to swallow. I think we can all confidently say that even if we never earned points or miles on every purchase from our credit cards, we would still charge everything to a credit card just for these protections alone. So I think we're going to kick it off with the first perk that all of us really love that comes with some of the cards we have, and that is car rental insurance, specifically primary car rental insurance. What this means is that you basically can charge your rental car to certain credit cards, and then when you get to the counter to get your car, you can turn down the car insurance that the rental car company will offer you that is normally very pricey um, and not worth it. And so the few that come with primary car rental insurance that are our favorites are the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and the Capital One Venture X. So I have the Preferred and the Venture X, so I always put my car rentals on one of those. And I want to say, like, even if I am working on a minimum spend on a different card, I will not put my car rental on that card just to hit the minimum spend. It is more important to me to get that primary car rental insurance coverage. So I will put it on my Sapphire Preferred or my Venture X. I will get 2x points on that car rental from either of those cards. And I am perfectly happy with that and the peace of mind that it gives me. I agree, Jess. And I think what you said about peace of mind is huge. I used to hate to go up to the car rental counter and I knew they were going to go into their spiel about why I needed to buy insurance. And I hated that. And I didn't know which of my cards would do the right thing. And it's just become so simple. I just know I always have my Chase Sapphire preferred card. I tell my husband, this is what we always use when we rent a car. And it's just easy peasy and gives me so much peace of mind. Yeah. So I'm with you guys. I use my Chase Sapphire Preferred or Venture X. It kind of just depends on which card. I usually take both of them when I travel, but it kind of just depends on what I grab first, I guess. Like I don't really have a set system of which one of those that I use. I know they're both really, they're going to give me both 2X. They're both going to give me the primary coverage. And I think that's the important thing to know is How the primary coverage works is if you don't, you know, you're not going to buy the insurance that the car rental offers you because that's expensive and unnecessary. In the past, my husband and I, before we had these credit cards and we're into travel hacking, we still would decline it. We never got the insurance from the car rental company. We would just like, you know, roll the dice on that one. And one time we actually did have a little fender bender in Hawaii. But our so what they do is it then our personal insurance kicks in. And so we did have to pay our deductible. I think we had to pay like five hundred dollars or something. Um, So it wasn't terrible as like when it happened, we were like, oh, my gosh, what does this mean? We didn't buy the insurance from the travel or from the rental car company. What's going to happen to us? But it like worked out just okay. I guess I say it wasn't just fine. We had to spend like five hundred dollars. But if we would have had one of these credit cards at the time, and we would have charged it to that credit card, we wouldn't have had to pay anything. These credit cards are the first like line of defense, I guess you would say. They're, they're your primary coverage. And a lot of the other travel rewards cards like Amex Platinum, for example, they offer 
rental coverage, but it's not primary, it's secondary. So your personal coverage kicks in first and then they will cover whatever your your personal auto insurance won't cover. And so that is why we love these cards because they will cover you before you shouldn't even have to t- talk to your own like personal um, car rental company that you use for your cars at home. Yeah. And I think we should also point out that the city premier, the city cards have absolutely no travel protections. And so I think that the like the city premier gets 3x on travel, but I have never used my city premier card for travel because I am not willing to risk, you know, not having those protections in place for an extra 1x on my purchase. Completely agree. I agree. So let's talk about another protection that many of our credit cards give us. And I know Alex and I have personal experience with that, and that is loss, delayed, or damaged baggage. Now, I have had two instances where my bags got delayed. And Alex, do you remember when we were in Greece and I was three days without my luggage? (laughs) It was pretty interesting. Well, I remember we flew out of Denver and our connection in Chicago wasn't very long. And I don't know if there was a delay or something. I carried on. So I was fine. But she checked her bags. I remember on the plane being like, you know, kind of like, oh, that was a rush getting on the flight. I hope our bags made it. We had to switch terminals too, which made it even harder. And go back to security. Yes. Yes. And so we got to Athens and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And you know how that is when you check in bags and your bag is coming out last. But mine didn't even come out last. It never came out. <laughs> I don't, I, and I hadn't even packed anything else. And it was late by this point. Wasn't it getting kind of late? We were so tired. And so I remember going and they, it was on Turkish Airlines and they did give me a little survival bag of necessities and um, I was able to use those things. But then I realized that I remembered from the time before when I had a a lost bag that I was able to purchase some um, essentials to get me through. And so I started researching and I had um, paid for my I guess my um, taxes and fees on a card that let me go out and buy necessities. So one of the really good perks with the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Reserve or Ink Business Preferred is that you get up to $100 per day for a maximum of five days if your baggage is delayed more than six hours. Well, mine was delayed three days. So I had $300 that I could spend on things to get me through, and I knew that that would be reimbursed. And actually, I mean, yeah, it sucked big time not having my clothes. And I had to borrow from my daughter, and I don't have the cutest clothes in the um, outfits. But I came home with some brand new makeup, and I remember some a new bathing suit and a cover-up and some joggers. And so all in all, at the end, I thought, well, that wasn't too bad. So I was really grateful. for. So that is something that is really good to know because I'm not someone who checks in as much. I would prefer to not deal with my luggage. And so knowing that I've got that delayed baggage coverage is huge for me. Yeah, mom, I totally remember being in Athens and going to like the makeup stores. Like we're in the city, seeing all the Greek sites. And then in between, we're like, oh, there's a store. We need to go in there and get you a bathing suit. Because in case your luggage doesn't make it, we're going to need, you're going to need a bathing suit for when we get to Santorini. So, I mean, it was a hassle, but it made for some laughs. That's for sure. And and here's interesting. This happened in Athens. My bag did not show up until we got to Santorini. That was a little harrowing, but it, it did eventually come on the vacation with us. And if you had charged that to a debit card, then you would have gotten nothing. So I think that's that just drives the point home that it's worth putting these purchases on credit cards, you know, just alone for the protections. Yeah. So as my mom said, I have had an experience with this as well. My situation was a little different. This was um, quite a while ago. It's when I had just started travel hacking. 
and we took our family to San Diego. We were going to Legoland. And when we landed, we had gate checked our stroller for our, he was our two-year-old at the time. He's now seven, so it was a while ago. But we gate checked the stroller. And then when we got the stroller back, we put him in it. And like the little leg rest where he could rest his feet, it wouldn't stay up. It just like kept flopping down. And so I'm like, ah, this used to not be like that. And so I had remembered that I had booked, I had booked um, Chase or Southwest points. We flew on Southwest. And so I paid my taxes and fees, though, just the measly $5.60 per person for on my Chase Sapphire Preferred. And so I remember that that came with damaged, not just lost, but even damaged luggage. And so I went to the Southwest counter. And when you check in any of these things, Southwest always makes it a point to tell you we're not like liable for lost and damaged strollers and car seats and all of that. So I knew Southwest wasn't going to cover it, but I knew I needed to get a claim so I could submit it to Chase so that they would cover it. So I went to the Southwest little baggage claim office right there by in the baggage claim area and got a claim from them. And then when we got home from our trip, So we still used the the stroller at Legoland. Like it worked. It was just annoying because the footrest kept breaking or falling off. So he couldn't like rest his feet as comfortably, but it was still like functioned. So when we got home, I had that paper from Southwest, the claim from them. I went online to Chase. I filed the claim. They actually needed to have the receipt from my purchase, which I was like, "Um, I've had this purchase for like six or seven years now like I don't know because it was my oldest it was his original stroller so I was like I don't know if I'm gonna find this this receipt but luckily I bought it on Amazon and so I pulled up the receipt sent it to them I don't remember exactly how long it took but it all the, like a check came in the mail for the full price of the stroller which was like probably six years old by then which I was pretty happy about because the stroller had kind of like lived its life already at that point being six years old. So I was like, sweet, we don't really need this stroller anyways. Like he's old enough where he can just go in like one of those cheap little umbrella strollers. So it actually was like a win-win because I was like, great. I just got like $250 for this stroller that we really don't really need and still works good enough. So I like since that day have never not paid for the taxes and fees on a flight with my Chase Sapphire preferred. People who are listening to this are going to be hoping that Southwest breaks their strollers now. Like they're going to. I know. Yeah. Like whenever I fly and they tell me that, I'm like, eh, it's fine. You break it. Chase will get me a new one. It's fine. No big deal. Like they're going to be bringing their strollers and gate checking them even if they don't need them. Like, please break this and help me make $300 off this flight. I think one of the things, too, Alex, is that you mentioned that's important is if this happens to you, and I know that this is what I did with uh, my delayed bags, is that you to keep track of receipts. And so I took pictures of every receipt that I had as I was buying things so that when I was ready to make that claim, when I got home, I could send in those receipts. It really was not a difficult process. It took, you know, a few weeks, but I did too. Like you, I got a check in the mail and, you know, talk about making lemonade out of lemons. You know, when you get um, free clothes and makeup or free stroller, you know, the inconvenience is much less. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to mention too, is when you're using your Chase Sapphire Preferred or your Chase Sapphire Reserve, you are good to just pay the taxes and fees on your award flight and you will get the lost covered damaged baggage stuff, all good to go. But the American Express Platinum, the Amex cards, they won't cover your luggage unless you pay for the whole flight with your Amex card. So if you're using points and then your taxes and fees, they're not going to cover your lost and damaged baggage. So I always use my Chase Sapphire Preferred for that because I know even if I'm just charging taxes and fees, I'm good to go. Yeah, I think for me, it's just become when I'm traveling, my Chase Sapphire Preferred is what I always use for taxes and fees because it has great coverage around the board on everything. And so it's just pretty simple to think about one card instead of like, oh, which card should I use in this 
situation. I like to keep it simple. Yeah, I'm the same. And I, I'm i like Alex where like I either use my Sapphire Preferred or my Venture X, just whichever one is closer to the front of my wallet basically is the one that I just grab and use. Um, so yeah, I agree. So why don't we move on to cell phone insurance, which is another one that is huge and can potentially save you a lot of money because as we all know, phones are not cheap these days. So having that extra protection can save you a lot of money. So Pam, why don't you tell us about your trip to Scotland and what happened with your phone? Oh, yes. So anyway, I have a case on my trip um, that I have on my phone all the time, but I have to take it off to charge it. And so I charged it. And then we were leaving our bed and breakfast on the Isle of Skye. And somehow I got in the car and I go, oh, my goodness, I don't have my case to my phone. And I tried calling them to see if I'd left it there. I think I did. I think what happened is they probably gathered up all the um, bedding and just threw it in the laundry because they didn't find it. But anyway, we were heading on a walk. And I can't even remember. It's, it's a curing walk. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Beautiful, beautiful scenic walk in Scotland. And I'm trying to take pictures of my daughter's but one of them, I think, wanted me to use their phone, and I'm holding my phone that doesn't have a protective cover and dropped it on some rocks. And it's workable, but it is really ugly. It's really unseemly, and it looks like, ooh, how long is this going to work? Well, most of the time, we have coverage on our credit cards. As long as you pay your phone bill in full with a credit card, you will have coverage on many of the cards that we use. Uh, most of them will give you $800 to $1,000 coverage with a $50 deductible, deductible twice a year. So you could blow it like I did twice a year. This is where I made a mistake. I have been paying uh, my cell phone bill with a American Express Business Platinum card. Great plan. But uh, in a previous episode, you, you've heard how I'm on the gravy train with my American Express Business Platinum cards, and you can get a $10 credit when you um, use them to pay your account. So I've been splitting up my payments um, to T-Mobile. So I've been paying $10 on like six cards and it covers my account fully. I'm thinking, I am so smart. I am really doing a good job with this. So when I get back and I'm trying to get that cell phone coverage, I find out that, yeah, you have to be paying your full bill on one card. So it's not going to be covered. But if you count all the time, all the bills that I've saved by all that money I've saved, you know, by my bill being zero, you know, it's I guess I'm coming out kind of OK. But so anyway, don't do what I did. Pay your entire bill on a card. Um, Platinum Business is a great card to use. I know, Alex, you use something else, don't you? Yeah, well, I am actually a new business Platinum card holder. And so I need to switch my cell phone bill to my business Platinum so I can start using that $10 credit. But up until now, I have been using the Capital One Venture X card because that also has a great cell phone protection. So, Pam, the Amex actually told you that they're not going to cover it because I've done the same thing. I don't have six business platinums, but like I have one and my husband has one. I'm guessing most of the people listening don't have six either. So I was doing the thing where like I would charge $10 on his and then the remainder on mine. But it sounds like it's not worth doing that going forward. And I should just put, you know, to save $10 and I should just put the whole thing on mine. I actually ha haven't talked to them. I was reading it, and it says that when you go in under the one card to try to do a claim, it says you have to, one of the uh, conditions is you have to put your whole bill on it. So I'm probably going to call them. I'm not expecting this to work for me, but I will give it a try. Or maybe try to put the one, you know, that you had like the bulk of your bill on. Oh, no, I was doing I was doing $10 on six of them. And my bill was only 60 or seven. OK, my bill is way more than that. 
Well, and also, are you going to call me like, hi, I have six American Express Platinum cards. Can you help me out? Because you don't want them knowing about that. Right. Well, and it is working. So I got a new case. It's protected now. You can't see that ugly, you know. It's on the back of the phone. Yes, it's on the back of the phone. It's all chipped and stuff. But I've got a good case on it now. So I feel like, oh, it's going to continue to work for me. So I, I may just, you know, not do that. I'm, I'm too embarrassed to. That is hilarious. I mean, it's not hilarious, but it's also kind of hilarious. Um, this is such a Pam, a Pam problem to have six business platinum cards. But I'm this, as I said, I put mine on my Amex business platinum also for that $10 monthly credit because that effectively adds up to $120 a year that I subtract from the annual fee that I pay because I would be paying for my cell phone anyway. So I might as well get that $10 a month. Before that, I had it. I had my cell phone on the Freedom Flex card, which actually for a no annual fee card gives amazing cell phone coverage. So if you don't have the business platinum, like Alex said, the Venture X is a great choice. Also, the Freedom Flex is another great choice and has no annual fee. Another thing that I want to mention is if you have an Apple phone, like they'll always try to get you to buy Apple Care. And it's pricey. Like, I've never bought it. If, as Same thing with the insurance from the car rental agencies. I would just roll the dice with the insurance with Apple Care. So if you don't want to have to pay for Apple Care and their coverage, just put it on your credit card and you can rest easy knowing you still have insurance, but you're not paying a monthly fee to have it. Yeah. And so we talked a lot about how much we love the Chase Sapphire Preferred for the uh, insurance that you get with travel. But the Chase Sapphire Preferred doesn't have great phone coverage, does it? For phone coverage, you know, again, we probably would pick the Capital One Venture X card, our Platinum Business cards, or the Chase Freedom Flex card. And there are some other cards that you could use, too. So just check the cards that you have. But, you know, be sure and pay your bills with that because if you have an aha moment like me, you want to be covered. And I would say, too, just like what Jess said about the car rental situation where it's like, I'm not going to put my cell phone bill on the card I'm meeting minimum spend on. I just leave it on these cards so that I have protection on my cell phone. Because like literally my like 90% of my business is of travel hacking mom is ran on my cell phone. Maybe not 90%, but a large portion of it. And so my cell phone is kind of my like life to the business. So it needs to have protection at all times. Okay, so another thing that uh, credit cards are really good at providing protection for is delayed and canceled flights. How many of you were burned by the Southwest mistakes over the holidays? Those were nasty. There were so many people that were left stranded in airports and, you know, couldn't get to a hotel or just it was just it was just nasty stuff. You know, while delayed and canceled flight insurance won't make up for something like that, at least you can get something out of it. So again, we go back to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Venture X, the Chase Sapphire Reserved. And if you have a delay of over six hours, you can get $500. That's, I've had that happen several times. I had that happen on a trip going to Hawaii one time where if we hadn't been able to book another flight, we would have been stuck in the airport. Now, that would have sucked. I probably wouldn't have gone and stayed at a hotel for that time, but it would have been really kind of nice if I had had that protection that I would have at least got $500 out of it. We could have gone and had some nice meals in Hawaii when we got there. Um, but that's really important if you get stuck and you have to spend the night somewhere, then you know that you can pay for it. You don't even have to use your hotel points for it. You can just use your the money that you get on that so that what pam just discussed is about delayed flights but then there's also an issue when flights are just completely canceled and so for canceled flights there is protection on the sapphire preferred and the sapphire reserve for up to ten thousand dollars per covered person with a maximum of twenty thousand dollars per trip so i cannot imagine ever needing more coverage than so I'm happy to use my Sapphire Preferred 
for this reason, just for peace of mind. And I will also say I don't have any examples for any of these because I have actually never had to file a claim for lost luggage or trip cancellation or anything like that. But nevertheless, I still put everything on these cards because I feel like it's not a matter of if, but when. And so I just want to have all my bases covered when the time comes. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think the takeaway here is if you're booking anything that has to do with flights, you want to put that on your Sapphire Preferred or your Sapphire Reserve, and it'll just make it really easy for you. You don't have to even think about it. You don't have to think, oh, what car should I be using for this or that? Like, If you use your Sapphire Preferred or Reserve for any flights, taxes, fees, you are covered. You're good to go. You'll have like the best protections out there. If I'm paying cash for a flight, I will say I will use, like, if I had a, the like the Amex personal card, the um, business platinum personal card, does get 5X on those. And if you're paying for the whole flight in cash, then you're going to have good protections. So, but if otherwise, if you're doing award flights, just make it easy on yourself and use a preferred or reserve. And I also want to mention that I know that it is a lot to keep track of as far as all of these different cards, all of the different protections that they offer. If you are an Award Travel Academy student, we have a whole collection of credit card cheat sheets with some of our favorite cards. They list all the spend categories. They list all of the protections and benefits that come with those cards on the cheat sheets. So if you're an Award Travel Academy student, you have access to those in Teachable. And if you're not an Award Travel Academy student, then you should be because this is just one of many benefits and resources that is included with our course. So as you can see, having a credit card perk can turn a trip disaster into something that you can live with. When an accident occurs to your phone, your luggage, or your trip, double check what coverage you have on your credit card to cover it and lessen the blow. Better yet, pick that one card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred to cover all your taxes and fees and the Venture X to cover your cell phone bills and breathe easy knowing that you are covered. Thanks so much for listening to the Travel Hacking Mom Show. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button from wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Want to start jet setting even faster? Follow the links in the show notes to learn about everything we discussed in today's episode. And to stay connected and follow along, follow us on Instagram at Travel Hacking Mom. We can't wait to see where in the world points and miles take you.